you know, of course, our lives have all been upended by COVID-19. People are spending a lot more time at home these days. And I can only imagine that if the phone rings, whether you still have a landline or if it's your cell phone or whatever, and it is a number that you don't know, uh, and or you pick up the phone and you hear some kind of nonsense on the other end about something that sounds like a scam or something going on, it can be really, really annoying uh, anytime, but especially right now when we have all of this added stress. Um, and uh, Jim Terrell is the uh, Senior Director of Product Marketing and uh, Robocall Data Expert. He's with uh, Transaction Network Services. Jim, thanks so much for uh, talking to me about this today. Really appreciate it. Absolutely, Matt. Uh, appreciate you uh, taking the time to uh, talk to me. So where does Georgia rank? I know that uh, we, we get a lot, I mean, millions and millions of, of robocalls. Where do we rank as far as the uh, uh, 50 states go? Yeah, so actually Georgia is in the, uh, in the top 10, um, and you guys have probably seen a roughly around, you know, 79, 80 million robocalls uh, to date, um, you know, pretty much led by Atlanta, which has seen around 53 million, and, and Savannah and around 11 million. So those are the top two MSAs, if you will, within uh, top 10. Um, so not good, for your, uh, not good for your listeners. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, a lot of people will say, well, you know, I have my, my name is on the federal do not call list. I, I you know, have taken that precaution. It's been on there for years, but I still get these calls. Why would that be the case? Why is it still such a problem? Yeah. Problem. Yeah, so unfortunately, uh, bad actors really don't pay attention to the uh, to the FTC, the uh, Federal Trade Communications Do Not Call list. Um, they're really more confidence men, if you will, and and you know take advantage of you know whatever's topical to uh, to try to scam people out of money. You know, you dial a lot of numbers, and you know eventually somebody's going to pick up. And unfortunately, you know they sound very uh, very convincing, and that will, uh, you know, that could lead to a potential fraud or potential, you know, potential scamming of, uh, of personal information, so, uh, of personal information. So unfortunately, uh, you know, they can, they can make some, they can make some pretty good money out of it. Um, but unfortunately it's, it, it's illegal. Yeah, it's, uh, and it's something that, like you say, I mean, if they're, if they're going to be involved in, uh, in scamming folks anyway, they're likely not to pay attention to what they're supposed to be doing. And what are some of the scams that we're seeing right now? Of course, I led off by, uh, you know, talking about COVID-19, which is top of mind for everybody right now. Are we seeing just a, really a, a huge increase in COVID-19 scams? Yeah, we actually have. So, I mean, orig originally it started out with, you know, kind of the test kits and the man of the test kits and the masks and, you know, uh, PPE, protective equipment uh, that, that, that we saw. We also saw some fake cures. But more recently, um, we know that all of the states have, have, have beefed up their contact tracing to, you know, help decline the spread of the, the disease or at least out, you know, what the source is, et cetera. Um, and so, Similarly, just like just like uh, you know, confidence men, they they shift their they shift their scams, and what we're seeing is you know more contact tracing scams. Um, what they'll basically do is they'll call up, sound you know very legitimate, and say, "Hey, Matt, you, you know you know we know that you were uh, you were near somebody that uh, had tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, we need you to take a test within 24 to 72 hours." and uh, and it's going to cost you fifty dollars. We'll send you a, we'll send you a test kit, and you know they'll they'll press you for you know credit card information and ask you to pay. Ask you to pay. Uh, obviously, you know true contact tracers are not going to ask you for that kind of information. They're going to you know want to verify who you are. You know maybe ask your address or date of birth. Um, but then they'll direct you to you know where the nearest testing center is. And clearly, there's no. Uh, charge to uh to, to uh you know come and get come and get tested in 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 any of the states or counties so uh, again it sounds very convincing and they'll and they'll and they'll press you um and and unfortunately uh that's that's one of the the newer scams we've seen uh student loan forgiveness is forgiveness is another big one where you know they'll they'll call you know student loan uh, debt is you know over you know over trillions of dollars and what they're basically going to say is is due to COVID-19 we're going to uh you know uh reduce your reduce your interest rate um 
you know, obviously that's can't do that. Uh, and, and, you know, that's another one that we've seen, you know, lots of, uh, you know, lots of activity around. And unfortunately, it sounds real, but, um, and something that would, would happen again, that's, I think, how these confidence men, these, these bad actors, uh, you know, do a really good job of, of, of making it sound, of making it sound very legitimate. Yeah, and is if, if that really kind of one of the better, um, uh, sort of rules of thumb when when dealing with these calls, you know, from numbers that you don't know or whatever. If, if they call and they're talking about something that is, uh, you know, unsolicited by you or it sounds too good to be true, it probably is, as your, uh, you know, your dad or your grandmother or whoever <laughs> used to say. <laughs> right. Yeah. Usually, if, if if it sounds too good to be true, it typically is a scam. Um, you know, contract tr tracers aren't going to ask you for any personal information other than your date of birth. Uh, you know, legitimate, you know, Sally May or, you know, you know, people that are trying to, uh, you know, reduce your interest rate, whether it be, you know, a credit card company or, you know, a, you know, true, you know, a, a true student loan. Um, they're not going to ask you further for your personal information because they should already have it. Yeah, exactly. That's how you know if you're going to, if you're, if you're talking to someone, right, they, they're not going to ask for your personal information over the phone because, as you say, they've already got it. Um, well, Jim, anything else uh, that you wanted to mention that we have not talked about that comes to mind? Um, no, just, you know, I think you, you mentioned, you know, if you, see a, if you see a number that you don't recognize, uh, you know, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't pick, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't pick it up, um, you know, and, and, and so if it's a legitimate person trying to get a hold of you, they'll figure out a way to do that, or they'll leave you a voicemail with clear instructions on, on how to get back you know, how to get back to it. So um, again, uh, the, they also have, you know, robocall apps. Um, and I would, you know, encourage people to, you know, talk to the carrier, find out what, you know, what app they can download. There are free versions that are available. For example, Verizon has call filter um, that, that is available for free and you can download it and you download it and, you know, that'll provide you the protection um, that'll at least warn you of, of potential, potential spam or potential fraud. All right, very good. Well, Jim Terrell, Senior Director of Product Marketing and a robocall data expert with Transaction Network Services, TNS. Really appreciate your time, Jim, this uh, morning. Appreciate it and uh, I look forward to having you again. Yeah, thanks a lot, Matt. Uh, you know, I think it's important to educate, the, educate your listeners on, you know, what the latest scams are and, and, and to, you know, protect themselves because it, it does sound very legitimate. So I appreciate you uh, giving me the time. No worries, Jim. Thank you so much. Have a good one. You too.